Here's how this one works. Okay, I'm gonna start with my opponent on top of me like this. His elbows are down. He's gonna attempt to connect knees and elbows. So he's closed everything nice and tight. I'm in trouble, his head's down. It's hard to move. It's hard to get out. So watch what I do. I go hand in front of the neck. I make space. I pry. I get under. Pummel one. Pummel two. Flare the elbows. Extend my legs and lift. Sit up. I lock and my head is closed. He's on his knees. He's gonna do the same thing I did. He's gonna bring a hand back in front of my face, makes a little space, gets his elbows on the inside, and now his head's gonna go right under my jaw, and then he's gonna push me to my back and put his elbows on the mat and bring his knees to the elbows. Again, it's hard to move. What do I do? Frame. Don't be too nasty, but keep in mind, when, when it's real, you're gonna be like, ah, you're gonna be like framing. Get some space, get some space. Even though he's trying to clap me, I open his elbows, extend, and sit up. Lock my hands, and now it's his turn. You gotta go frame, and get your elbows in, pins me back down, my turn. Frame, elbows in, open, sit up, it's good. Then after about a minute or two, we'll switch, and you guys get to play the other role. This isn't a very basic thing, but you have to know this, okay? You have to know it to be able to do it in more advanced things for the butterfly guard. Let's go. One, two, three, three times where you're gonna get pinned for a second on the bottom and you're gonna have to make space. If you can't make space, what do we attack? We attack the neck to make a hole, okay? But this time, when I do it, I'm only gonna get one. I'm not gonna go for two. I'm just gonna go for one. When I go for one, the underhook grabs, no, no, just stay there. My underhook grabs my other hand, my wrist, look at the lock, okay? I squeeze and I pull him to me real tight. So if he's trying to hold me tight and trap me so I can't move, I pull him forward and I extend my legs and sit up. The moment this happens, I elevate the underhook and my elbow comes inside in front of his collarbone, okay? I use the radial bone right here to go against his neck and I open my elbow as much as I can. Squeeze him as much as I can. Don't leave a hole or his head can escape, okay? Later on, that'll be okay. But for now, you don't let his head out. You squeeze and he should feel very controlled. If he tries to close his elbow now, he shouldn't be able to. If he tries to lift his head, he shouldn't be able to. Okay? You guys are now going to squeeze it, and I'm going to spread my hooks as I try to elongate his spine. I want to stretch him out. So watch what I do. I go here. As I do that, I fall to my side. I still have two hooks. If he tries to maneuver his legs, I have his legs. See it? If he tries to post his right hand, I will force so much weight on his right that he'll take it out, watch. See that? As you do it, I squeeze and I force weight and go over to the mat. Once you do that, this position can change to this position. See how I have his head trapped? You guys wanna go secure? You can go ankles crossed or double grapevine, okay? Get working those legs or legs crossed. I say that because sometimes you mount him and then he starts to bridge you to the side and then you, you, have, you have to do this. 
And then that causes problems. Space is created. Escapes happen. I don't want to escape. So when I land on top and I'm here, I drop. So when he bridges, he feels sick. Get him tired first. Wear him out. If you want to come up here, take your time. Wear your opponent out. It's not a race. It's better to take your time for a minute. Let him know that you're in full control. And then after a while, he'll settle down. The horse will chill. So just get him here and walk his elbow up. Just hold on to him. He's bumping and moving. Establish. Grapevine hooks, crossed ankles, both good. Sometimes I, I change between the two. And then when I'm ready, we'll go ahead, we'll, we'll take it all the way over. There's an Americana. Or we got the arm triangle, right? We got we can go into here and get to our side choke, arm triangle choke. Okay? So I was down. Well, how do I make space? How do I make space? Yeah, I go in front of the neck, I get underhook. Now I'm just gonna lock. The underhook grabs the other wrist. Squeeze, pull him. So if he's trying to make this heavy and clap you, you pull and then I can extend. Lift and drop my elbow. This is a very important part. Take your fingers, point your fingers out. So when he tries to maneuver, it's tough. Next, I squeeze as I drop down. I'm ready to sleep. If I want to stay in contact, I can, just for fun. Like ask your partner to move. He can go to his back, but he can't jump over my legs. I'm just here. See that? I have full control. Even if he posts, you take away the post with pressure. He'll take it out. You'll go to the mouth. You'll establish. I'll take my time. And when the time is right, you'll go into attack. That might take a minute in the real world. It might take two minutes. The longer, the better. The more time you, you drown him underneath the mount, he don't want to fight you anymore. A lot of, there, there's guys that will just tap out. I'm talking about in the real world. They can't fight anymore. They'll tap out from pressure. You know how to pressure a guy? Eventually, you'll know too. Because they'll fight you like crazy in the beginning. And then they'll start to calm down. And then they'll just mercy tap. They, if you know how to do it right. If you rush, what happens? You rush it, you try to, I'm gonna do what so-and-so did in the UFC. Then what happens? The guy explodes, gets out. You don't have a submission. His fight goes up. He goes, the guy got me, but I got him back. No. We get him, he gets nothing. Okay? Let's go. One, two, three. The other way. Okay? So when I get the position, I get one underhook. And I lock my hands. I I get to here. Some of you guys were able to do it like this. Hip out, hip out, elbow in. If you do this, this is good too. Just don't let his arm move over your face. Because what happens now is he'll get his elbow back in. You see that? If you do get it over to the other side, you better check it and try to go to his back. But we're not doing that yet, okay? We'll do that another time. So for now, if you do hit the skate and you get to here, make sure you keep your head kind of pinching his arm with your shoulder and your head. So when I squeeze, he tries to move, and it's tough. Now when I go here, I'm gonna take him, but he's too strong. He posts his hand, and I try, and I try, but he's starting to fight. So I'm trying, and I'm like, dang, it's not gonna work. When a guy fights me hard, I'm gonna squeeze and take him this way. Now look where he is. I switched hooks. He tries to correct balance. There's no way to correct balance. Take the guy back to the We're in the same situation. If you ever get hooked in the corner guard, 
Sometimes he'll quarter guard you. Keep him in hot water. Don't let him out. Don't let this arm come out. Let him fight and just keep his arm stuck. Use your other foot, pry it out and go back to the mouth. Okay? So, butterfly, he's pinning me. I go frames, get an underhook, lock my hands. Maybe I extend, I sit up. He's trying to step out and keep it tight. But when I try to go, he posts, and I feel like it's not working. There's direction. The guy should not be able to run you out of the rack. And you're going in hot water. If his arm crosses now, that's okay. Keep it right here. He'll push you. But you'll just keep, keep his head stuck. Okay? Later on, this is beautiful. Okay? You're in a much better position. Okay, let's go. One, two, three.